To understand the operation of a pan flute, we need to visualize the behavior of invisible air molecules, and that isn't easy. Real air molecules are whizzing around like crazy at very high speed, and they're too fast to simulate here. So when we look at the animation in this simulation, with the blue dots oscillating up and down, we have to take this representation with a grain of salt. So what does the animation suggest? Well, when I watch it, I see the top end of the pipe moving from dense with particles to less dense or more rare with particles. As if the air is compressed and rarefied, compressed and rarefied with time. Of course, the rate at which this happens is very high, hundreds of times per second. So we've slowed it down enormously. The graph at left shows the amplitude of the displacement of air as it varies along the tube. So it appears to be at the top of the tube in the animation would be at the right of the graph. Likewise, what appears at the bottom of the tube in the animation would be at the left of the graph. As you can see, due to there being a cap at the bottom of the tube, there is little up and down motion there. The particles simply can't move past the end. Likewise, because the fluid is open at the top of the tube, there can be a great deal of back and forth motion there. So we see in the graph at left that the open end of the tube has a lot of back and forth motion of air, and the closed end of the tube has very little. We call the closed end a node and the open end an antinode for displacement. As you can imagine, at the bottom or closed end of the tube, the pressure varies up and down enormously. The open end of the tube is open to the ordinary air pressure, and the pressure there doesn't vary much at all. Distinguishing between the swings in pressure happening at each end and the swings in motion happening at each end is often difficult for introductory students, so keep a close eye on this as you study this material. The slider at left says we're blowing in the tube that produces the musical note E-flat. If we adjust the slider, we can produce a different musical note. The musical note we hear is just the frequency of oscillation of the air. Longer tubes produce lower notes. Shorter tubes produce higher notes. Let's choose the B-flat note. If the air can't displace up or down at the bottom, but must displace upward and downward at the top, there are only very specific shapes of the amplitude diagram that will meet these criteria. Let's move the harmonic slider to the third harmonic. The frequency of oscillation is now three times higher. This is what it means to be in the third harmonic. And if we look at the graph at left, we see that the upward and downward motion is now greatest in two places, at the open end of the tube as we saw before, but also somewhere within the tube. So when you blow in a tube, you are producing many different oscillation frequencies at once with your mouth. That is what makes it sound like white noise, a mix of high and low frequencies all together. These sound waves travel in the tube and some constructively interfere and others destructively interfere. Standing waves form that obey the constraints we put on our system, that the displacement not vary at the closed end and that the displacement vary the most at the open end. Any frequencies you're making with your mouth that creates waves that match this pattern will survive through constructive interference and any frequencies that you make with your mouth that do not match this pattern are canceled through destructive interference. In this way, the tube acts as a kind of selector, amplifying the sound waves you are making that match the length of the tube in appropriate ways. How much do these different frequencies contribute to the sound you actually hear? Measuring this is the job of a spectrum analyzer. As we see in the graph at top right, there are amplitude peaks at different frequencies. The sound we hear is a combination of all those different sounds, a fundamental note, the lowest frequency, matching the name of the note, and then overtones at three times, five times, seven times, and nine times the frequency. Why the odd pattern? Let's scroll up through the different frequencies. As we see in the fundamental, there is one quarter of a full sound wave represented in the standing wave. A full sine wave oscillates over a wavelength that's four times as long as the shape shown here. If we move to the third harmonic, we see three quarters of a full wave. If we move to the fifth harmonic, we see five quarters of a full wave, one full wave and then another quarter wave. If we move to the seventh harmonic, we see seven quarters of a wave, 
a full wave, and then another three quarters of a wave, and so on. In other words, only standing waves with wavelengths that are odd multiples of a quarter wave will fulfill our criteria that the amplitude of error displacement be zero at the closed end and maximum at the open end of the tube. Only these waves will survive the destructive sorting that happens when you blow in the tube. The fundamental wave equation states that the wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. So if you make the wavelength three times smaller, the frequency increases by a factor of three, and so on. Many years ago, music, mathematics, and science were all a single discipline. Hopefully this simulation helps you understand why. Thank you for watching.